Most people destroy their first vial of peptides and they have no idea why they did it. They shake it like a freaking protein shake. They spray the water directly onto the powder. They store it completely wrong. And they wonder why their $200 peptide bottle or their $1,000 peptide stack isn't working. <laughs> I'm Dr. Jones, DC, and I lead the coaching department for our nationwide GLP-1 and peptide clinic, where I work alongside our prescribing physicians. And I've coached thousands of patients through their first peptide injections. And I inject peptides myself. Today, I'm going to show you the exact process to prepare and inject your peptides the right way. But more importantly, I'm gonna show you the five mistakes that destroy your peptides or worse can even cause some complications. So you never waste another vial again. <laughs> let's get into this one. Before we get into the process, let's make sure that you have everything you need. And I'm not just telling you what to grab, I'm gonna be telling you why each piece matters. Okay, number one, first your peptide vial. This is your lyophilized powder. Now lyophilized, that's the freeze dry stuff that's inside the bottle. That's what we're going to reconstitute. Reconstitute means we're gonna turn it into a peptide solution that you can inject. Number two, your bacteriostatic water. This is critical. Bacteriostatic water contains a preservative called benzyl alcohol that prevents bacterial growth. This gives you 28 days of safe use after mixing. If someone gives you a plain sterile water instead, contamination risk begins immediately once that bottle is used. Most guidelines say to discard it within 24 hours, but the preservative protection, it's just not there from the start. And third, you need two different syringes. And here's why. For reconstitution, you want a larger, say three millimeter syringe with an 18 to 23 gauge needle. Larger needle means you can draw and inject the water quickly. But for the actual injection into your body, you want an insulin syringe with a tiny little needle, 28 to 31 gauge needle, much smaller and virtually painless. And fourth, you're gonna need some alcohol prep pads. You'll use this to clean the vial top and your injection site. And fifth, a sharps container for safe needle disposal. Don't skip on this one. Some states legally require proper sharps disposal. Now, if you're looking at all this and thinking, I want help figuring out which peptides are right for me or I need guidance on dosing and protocols, that's exactly what we do. You can either text number on the screen or you can check out the link in the description. But first, let me show you exactly how to reconstitute your peptides. Reconstitution is when you turn your freeze-dried powder into an injectable solution. So let's walk through the exact process. First, let both your peptide vial and your bacteriostatic water come to room temperature. Don't reconstitute anything cold. A few minutes on the counter is all you need. And by the way, don't keep your bacteriostatic water in the fridge. Leave it out room temperature. That's going to make this process easier. Clean the top of your bacteriostatic water vial with an alcohol prep pad. Take your three millimeter syringe with the larger gauge needle and draw the water. The amount depends on your specific peptide. Your provider should give you the exact instructions, but a common dilution is usually one to two milliliters per vial. Now clean the top of your peptide vial. Now here's the key technique. Tilt the vial slightly, aim the needle at the glass wall, not at the powder, and insert the needle and slowly inject the water, letting it run gently down the side of your vial. This protects the peptide structure. Remove the needle, now gently swirl the vial in a circular motion. Don't shake it, just a gentle swirl, or roll it between your palms. Let the powder dissolve naturally. This may take a few minutes, and that's perfectly fine. When it's ready, the solution should be completely clear. No cloudiness, no particles, no foam. If it looks good, you're ready to draw your dose. Now, if this is already making you feel more confident about handling your peptides, hit that subscribe button now because we put out four videos per week covering the topics of peptide and GLP-1 medication optimization. Now, let me show you how to draw your dose correctly. So you take that insulin syringe. Remember, this is the smaller one with the 28 to 31 gauge needle. Remove the cap, clean the top of your peptide vial again with a fresh alcohol prep pad, insert the needle into the center of the rubber stopper and turn the vial upside down. Make sure the needle tip is submerged in the liquid. Pull back the plunger slowly and draw out slightly more than your target dose. Now check for air bubbles. If you see any, tap the syringe gently and move them to the top then push the plunger just enough to release the air and bring yourself to the exact dose. Quick tip on reading insulin syringes. They're marked in units. So 100 units equals one milliliter. So if your dose is 0.2 milliliters, that's 20 units on the syringe. Your provider will give you the exact numbers, but understanding the markings helps you stay precise. Your syringe is loaded. Now let's talk about the actual injection. 
If you're nervous about the needle, that's completely understandable. But what most of my patients tell me is that after the first injection or two, the anticipation was way worse than the actual experience. These insulin needles are super tiny. You won't even feel it. So let's pick your injection site. The best spot for most people is the abdomen, your belly area. You want an area that's at least two inches away from your belly button with enough soft tissue to pinch. Your outer thigh works too, the front or the side midway between your knee and your hip. Upper arm is an option, but harder to reach on your own. Clean your injection site with an alcohol prep pad using a circular motion. Let it air dry until the skin feels dry, typically around 10 to 15 seconds. Don't blow on it, don't wipe it, just let it evaporate completely. This prevents stinging and ensures proper disinfection. Now here's something most tutorials get wrong. The angle of your injection depends on a few factors. As a general guideline, if you can pinch at least two inches of tissue at the injection site, 90 degrees straight in typically works well. But if you have less pinchable tissue, 45 degree angle helps keep the needle in the fatty layer. Your specific needle length matters too as well. So your provider might give you different guidance based on your anatomy. Pinch the skin between your thumb and your forefinger, lifting the fatty tissue away from the muscle. And on the count of three, insert the needle smoothly. Press the plunger slowly and steadily until it's fully depressed. Count to five before you withdraw the needle. This ensures the full dose is delivered and nothing leaks back out. Then pull straight out and apply gentle pressure with a cotton ball if needed. One more critical point. Rotate your injection sites every single time. I see this constantly in our clinic. Someone injects the same spot over and over again, and they develop something called lipohypertrophy. That's a tissue buildup that blocks proper absorption. Keep your injection site at least a single inch apart. Use a system here. Left side of your abdomen one day, right side on the next day. Then thighs. Predictable rotation means predictable results. Now that you know how to inject, if you want me to make a video breaking down the exact protocols that we use for specific peptides like BBC157, TB500, or AOD9604, drop in the comments which peptide that you want me to cover first. Now, let's talk about storage here because your peptide can still go bad after you've done everything right. As soon as you reconstitute your peptide, it goes into the refrigerator, not the freezer. The refrigerator, you want a consistent temperature between two and eight degrees Celsius, which is the standard refrigerator temperature. With bacteriostatic water, your reconstituted peptide is good for up to 28 days. I know many people will tell you that's good much longer, but we're just gonna go with the legal recommendation of 28 days. What you do is what you do. Just stay safe out there. One thing most people don't realize, many peptides are light sensitive. If your vial is clear glass, wrap it in aluminum foil or store it in a dark container. Light exposure can degrade the peptide over time, especially peptides containing certain amino acids. Now, here's how you know if a peptide has gone bad. Before every injection, do a quick visual check. The solution should be completely clear. If you see any of these warning signs, discard the vial immediately, cloudiness or haziness, visible particles or chunks floating in the solution, a gel-like consistency instead of a liquid, any discoloration or foam that doesn't go away. A small amount of bubbles from the injection process is normal, but persistent foam or cloudiness means something went wrong. Don't inject it, it's not worth the risk. Okay, now you know the complete process from start to finish. Now let's talk about the five common mistakes that you need to know to prevent destroying your peptides or causing complications. So mistake number one, shaking the vial. I had a patient bring in a vial that looked like a freaking snow globe, <laughs> foam everywhere, cloudy chunks floating around. She'd been shaking it like a protein shake, thinking that she was mixing it faster. This was a thousand dollar bottle of BPC-157, completely destroyed. Peptides are chains of amino acids and they're very, very delicate. When you shake them, you actually break the molecular bonds and you end up creating foam that denatures the structure, essentially makes it non-effective. And then you can cause aggregation where the peptides clump together and they lose effectiveness. Always gentle swirl, never shake. Mistake number two, spraying water directly onto the peptide powder. When you add bacteriostatic water, aim at the glass wall, not the powder. Let the water run gently down the side. Direct spray creates the same foaming problem and degrades your peptide before you even use it. Mistake number three, reconstituting cold peptides. If your peptide just came out of the freezer or fridge, let it reach room temperature first. Cold reconstitution can damage the molecular structure. Same with the bacteriostatic water. 
room temperature for both. Mistake number four, wrong injection angle for your body type. I see this constantly. Someone watches a tutorial, jabs at 90 degrees and hits a muscle instead of fat. Then they're sore for three days and wondering why their peptide doesn't seem to work as well. If you have less pinchable tissue, use the 45 degree angle. And if you can pinch at least two inches at the site, the 90 degrees is typically fine. Match the angle to your body and your needle length. And then finally, mistake number five, not letting the alcohol dry. After you clean your injection site, let it air dry completely, typically around 10 to 15 seconds, depending on conditions. Injecting through wet alcohol is going to sting. You aren't gonna like how it feels. And more importantly, it hasn't fully evaporated. You haven't fully disinfected. Patience here prevents problems. Those are the five mistakes. Avoid them and you'll protect your investment and get better results from every single injection. So let's recap here what you just learned. You know the equipment that you need and why each piece matters. You know how to reconstitute your peptides properly, letting the water run down the wall and gently swirling to dissolve. You know how to draw an accurate dose and remove air bubbles. You know how to inject subcutaneously into the fat tissue and at the right angle for your body. And you know how to rotate your sites every single time. You know how to store your peptides and the warning signs that means it's time to discard. And you know the five mistakes to never make. No shaking, no direct spray, no cold reconstitution, proper angle for your body and let the alcohol dry. <laughs> Congratulations, you now know more about peptide injection than 90% of the people that are doing this currently at home. But here's the thing, injection technique is just one piece, but the bigger questions are which peptides are right for your goals? What's the right dose for your body? How do you time it? How do you stack these peptides if you're using more than one? And how do you adjust as you progress? And what's the long-term goal here and how are you gonna get there with peptides? That's what we help people figure out every single day. If you want to personalize guidance on your peptide protocol, dosing, timing, which peptides actually make sense for your situation, that's exactly what we offer our free discovery calls. You can either text the number on the screen or you can check out the link in the description and you'll get to speak with one of our patient advocates who will get to know you, your health history, your goals, and they're gonna give you an idea of what it's like to work with me, my coaches, my medical team, so that you have a clear understanding and prices of what that would look like long-term to achieve your goals. One thing I wanted to say, there's a lot of recent buzz where people think peptides are much more stable than we had thought before, meaning you don't have to be so sensitive to protecting your peptides. I've seen that literature, but I still treat my peptides this way and I still recommend to patients to treat your peptides this way. It's potentially promising to know that maybe the peptides are more stable than we thought, but until we know for certain, that's a big investment financially speaking, and it seems a little silly to just think that those peptides are completely fine when you might be accidentally destroying them. Because what we've seen so far just means that they might be more stable. It doesn't mean that there's no problem at all. So just wanted to share that insight with you. Now, I think the most underrated peptide is GHK copper. And so if you guys haven't checked out this video, check out that video right there where I do a deep comprehensive dive into GHK copper, the anti-aging holy grail peptide for hair, skin, and nails too as well. We'll see you guys later.